Sorry. Thank you, Ehrlich. Um, Minister, um, could you tell us what plans you have, obviously, to protect Irish industry uh, in relation to Brexit? Obviously, that's your job, but if you could outline how you're going to do it sector by sector. Um, I've listened to all the questions on Brexit here earlier on, and uh, obviously, uh, you keep repeating there's 52 million and 3 million uh, in place, but how are, we, how, are we, how are you going to break down the supports and ensure that the uh, various different sectors are being protected? So could you, in the few minutes you have, as much as you can, outline to us in how these sectors are being protected individually? One, it's an Enterprise Ireland that's going to be working on sector by sector, and they have been doing that. And what they have done, what, if I can, please, what they have done, they have contacted each individual one of their 1,400 clients. And that's what you need. You need, you need a bespoke uh, response to the different clients. So they have outlined their five pillars of support, and that includes information and guidance, market diversification support, international sector clustering strategy, UK market support, competitiveness, and market development support. So there is a huge potential to diversify, and we'll be working our way through that. But obviously, the, the um, Enterprise Ireland has been working with many of these companies for many years, and they know the weaknesses and they know the strengths of the companies. And as I said already, the companies have different asks, and we'll be trying to respond to that. And I think it would be most foolish of me and the department to announce something when we do not know what the companies want, we do not know exactly what, what their needs are, and that will be worked on. It's actually been worked on, and we'll probably have that response in a fortnight's time. And if I can just say to you that the sectoral, uh, the, uh, that for example, uh, Small Firms Association, IBEC, ISME, they have all bought into this and they know that this needs to be done so that we can give a proper targeted response. One minute, Deputy Supplementary. Uh, Minister, um, um, I'm just surprised that you're saying that it's EI's responsibility and not your own. It's really your responsibility. All, the, all agencies. Sorry, excuse sorry, 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 I did. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. If I could have the time have back an there. Opportunity. If I could have that time back, uh, uh, Alaska here. Look. Well, it is your responsibility, it's not Enterprise Ireland's responsibility, and it's nice to have another five-point plan coming, coming out of the Fine Gael Minister under the five pillars. And I actually do agree with you in relation to not announcing it too early, making sure it's correct. I just want to make sure, Minister, you're not making it up as you go along in relation to what's happening here. We need to ensure that across all of these sectors, and it's broken down by sector, that um, all areas are covered, whether it's uh, market volatility, access to market, the whole area of supply chain management, uh, changes in business model potential, taxation issues, workforce mobility, that across all the sectors, that all of these issues and many, many other issues are all being planned for thoroughly uh, by your department and by all of your agencies uh, that work with you. First of all, um, can I say that I work very closely with Enterprise Ireland and I probably talk to them once every two days. And then, as I said, we have meetings you know, on a fortnightly basis where Enterprise Ireland would come back to the department, to our officials, and give us exactly the details on the ground with the companies. And it's not hearsay, and it's not someone talking in the pub. So from a strategic perspective, Enterprise Ireland has a two-pronged approach, and that's to assist companies, and this is really important, to maintain and grow UK exports, and, but also to extend their international reach, reorienting towards North America, Canada, Asia and the Middle East. EI is particularly working with companies who are most exposed in the UK in areas such as engineering, food, construction and timber. And as I said, they have contacted the 1,400 client companies and they certainly are not making it up as they go along. So Enterprise Ireland is also supporting companies to enhance their competitiveness, to protect and grow Irish exports and jobs. Oh EI is assisting clients. Uh, uh, one minute and one minute. Thanks. Uh, let's go again. Um, look, Minister, um, we'll know a lot in two weeks' time. 
uh, according to yourself, so I look forward to that. You said that uh, Enterprise Ireland um, don't make it up as they go along. I know that. I, I worked fairly closely with them myself for many years. However, you said they have a two-pronged approach, but just three minutes ago you said they have five pillars. So it's, it's great to have all these uh, statements. It's actual practical uh, analysis across all the sectors to show that depending on, and we don't know uh, what's going to happen in relation to how this is going to be triggered in Britain, particularly after today's judgment. But we need to be able to, across sector, plan uh, for all eventualities, across a range of issues, which I've only hinted at earlier on, which is a huge list of them. So and we need to have confidence that there is a plan in place. You say that we'll know about it in two weeks' time. I'm sure myself and all other spokespersons look forward to this. Can I finally ask you on this question, uh, have you plans to meet with uh, uh, Michael Barnier? Uh, I know the, the Taoiseach has, and uh, who is uh, our, and also um, how quickly uh, will you be able to meet with him, and how do you foresee the role of the Irish appointee uh, to the uh, Brussels group now that's going to be overseeing Brexit? Um, again, you know, um, what I will say is Enterprise Ireland has 1,400 companies. They have contacted them. They have had face-to-face -face meetings, and they're certainly not making it up, or th they are aware of what exactly is needed. Now, I'm going to answer questions that I think need to be answered, as in, you know, I think it's very important that the uh, companies are, are lean, that they're competitive, that they're, that they're um, up to date, that they're able to respond uh, to, the, to the challenges there, and to you know competitiveness such as oil prices exchange rates all of that happens but then there's many factors within the control of the management team and that's what enterprise or ireland are doing and they're under the, my auspices under my ministry and, and i will make sure that that happens when we get this targeted response of companies then we will look at that and we'll plan and see what we need to do and, the, uh, and uh, certainly, first of all, you know, I, I'll be hoping that we'll have a good targeted response uh, from the we, companies. I think you'll have other opportunities. You may have other opportunities. Sorry, I'll just no, listen, Deputy. No, Minister, I, I'm here to implement standing orders. Uh, we have to move on to... Uh, Minister, here's an opportunity, and I, I, I hope you will be very specific. Um, I'm asking you in relation to the meetings that have taken place in relation to Brexit with your Cabinet colleagues, who are uh, obviously a Cabinet subcommittee level, which are internally within your department, with your departmental agencies and with other external stakeholders, um, uh, given uh, that this is the, obviously the most important topic uh, that you are likely to face uh, during your tenure in this department. Very good. Two minutes. I had a wide and extensive series of meetings since the result of the UK referendum in June. I'm a member of the Cabinet Committee on Brexit, which has already met on a number of occasions. And as regards my own department and its agencies, I've established a coordination group consisting of the CEOs of both IDA Ireland and Enterprise Ireland and relevant enterprise, single market and trade officials from my department. I'm continuing to chair this group. I've met with a wide range, and this is only a few of the wide range, of representative organisations, including IBEC, ICTU, ISME, SFA, the Irish Exporters Association, the American Chamber of Commerce, the Dublin Chamber of Commerce, Enterprise Ireland, the Regional Plan Action Plan Implementation Groups, IDA and EI companies, as well as the Irish Farmers Association. And in September, I travelled and met with Commissioner Elisabetha Biancosca, Commissioner for the Internal Market, Industry, Entrepreneurship and SMEs, and with Commissioner Cecilia Malstrom, Commissioner for Trade, and also with Vicky Ford, MEP, Chair of the Internal Market and Committee of the European Parliament. Yesterday, I was in London and met with Secretaries of State, Lean Fox International Trade, and Greg Clark, Business Energy, and industrial strategy. In addition, on the day before, 
I met the UK Trade Minister, Lord Price, earlier this week during his visit to Dublin. I have also met with my Northern Ireland counterpart, Minister Simon Hamilton, and I look forward to an ongoing <coughs> engagement with Minister Hamilton, including through the North-South Ministerial Council. And in all of these meetings and fora, I have been very conscious of the need to respond in the most appropriate manner to the challenges presented by the movements in this externally exchange rate. First supplementary, one minute. Thank you. Uh, Minister, um, you might tell us how many meetings there were of the Cabinet Subcommittee on Brexit in your re next reply, please. Um, also, um, in relation to the Brexit Coordination Group, how many times has it met in your department? In, in your reply, please. Sorry. Um, uh, for, furthermore, you said uh, earlier on that you hope to meet with, uh, uh, with uh, Mr. Barnier. Um, uh, have you written to him? Um, I asked you an earlier question, which you refused to answer, which is what do you see the role of the Irish appointee uh, to the Brexit group in Brussels? At the end of the day, it is the Brussels group who will decide the fate of of, uh, of our, our situation with Britain through, uh, on Brexit. It is not Ireland. So what's the role there? And finally, um, what, uh, have you uh, looked to meet with, uh, with Sabine uh, Weyand and what do you foresee her role in this uh, as well? I'd appreciate if you could outline specifically answers to those questions. One minute, yeah. Minister. Right. Um, you were to repeat one of the questions because I didn't hear the deputy. Mission group. It was the, well, I repeat the question. So Just that one the, relation to the formation. Number two. Mr. Barney, Sabine Way and the Irish uh, appointee to the Brussels group, the role, uh, the number of meetings of the Cabinet uh, subcommittee, and the numbers of time that the group uh, within her own yeah. department have met. Okay. Okay. Um, number one, I think the, my availability and the meetings that I have are actually put up on the web, so that, that's, you, know, you can check out the meetings that I've had. As I said, I have, we have in our department, we have a business Brexit response, we have a coordination group meeting, and then we have a departmental Brexit group. I haven't got the uh, details of the questions, the specific numbers, but I'd be more than happy to write to the deputy and answer the questions that he has asked. Uh, final. Well, here, look, I find this extraordinary. Uh, Minister, I've sat there on many occasions for five years, and not to have the details of how many times a Cabinet subcommittee has met on Brexit is incredible. I mean, you don't need notes to know it either met once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven times. I don't foresee it was any more than that. Um, in relation to your own department, the coordination group, similar. Um, surely, as Minister, you should know uh, how many times that has met. Uh, you still haven't answered the question in relation to Mr Vernier, and particularly you haven't answered the question in relation to the Irish appointee to the group in Brussels, or the question in relation to Sabine uh, Weyand and her role. Um, you might outline to the House answers to those questions, and specifically uh, give confidence to the House uh, that you know the number of meetings and you know the role of the three individuals that I've outlined. Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy. And as I said, I will write to make sure that you get the exact numbers of the meeting. Can I just say, talking about Cabinet committees on Brexit, I don't just have it here at the moment, but I do sit on a number of Cabinet committees. I sit on the Economy, Trade and Jobs one. I sit on the Cabinet Committee on Infrastructure, Environment and Climate Action. I sit on the Cabinet Committee so on European Affairs. And I will give you... Deputy I will give you <laughs> Minister without interruption. Sorry, Ken Corla. Minister, Minister without Nas interruption. Ken Corla, can I have said that I would write and give him the exact number and I'll copy a letter. I can't be responsible for the Minister's answers, Minister. And I will copy an answer to you, Ken Corla, and to any of other members that would like that, that the answers to that question. I don't have it exactly here on me, but I do know that the coordination group meeting within our department with IDA and Enterprise Ireland meets regularly on a fortnightly basis. Now